YouTube, YouTube, what I do, tube down, no news TV, I'm your host, Dre, and I'm not, I don't think I did a video with, um, amazing Jesse Lee Peterson and Charleston White before, I probably have in a, a while ago, I'm not sure how long ago, but, um, I just ran across this interview with Jesse Lee and Charleston White, and I believe Charleston's talking about black culture. And his um, perception of it. And what he thought he was supposed to do as a black man in society emulating black culture. And I guess what other ethnicities thought about black culture as it is portrayed. But um, you know what these two characters, they can offend some people so... I'm just reacting, watching a video, and I say y'all, tag along with me in this journey. Let's check it out. Charleston White and Jesse Lee Peterson. To me. So, I literally grew up believing that men, for one, don't work, because I've never seen a man get up and go to work. I grew up believing that men went to prison, went to jail, so I aspired to be a man. How do you become a man? You gotta go to jail. Yeah, we got Charleston White and Jesse Lee Peterson. Two of the black liberals, most hated ops, outside of Candace Owens, of course, engaging in a very deep conversation about the black culture and who actually controls it. And why joining GANGs happens to be popular amongst young black males. What made you get involved with them? Uh, it was everything I was looking for, uh, coming from a single parent home, never being, never been spanked by a man, uh, never been disciplined by a man. Uh, never been uh, corrected by a man, uh, never been hugged by a man, uh, never had a man say, I'm proud of you, never heard a man say, I love you. So uh, the, the older guys in the game uh, gave me the affirmation uh, that I sought to have from a father. Just the beginning of that is pretty sad, but um, I was blessed to be raised by both of my parents, my mom and dad, both parents in the household, and um, I work retail sometimes, part-time, and uh, I heard the saddest story I ever heard in my life, well, it's not the saddest story I ever heard in my life, but um, it was this uh, couple that adopted this young teenage girl, or she's about to be a teenage girl, and um, her birthday was going to be that following Monday, and I was listening on a conversation, and the girl was saying that uh, she doesn't know what she wants for her birthday, because she never had a birthday before, and nobody's ever given her presents. Her and her adopted mother was talking about it. The uh, mother was saying she needs to ask somebody what she wants for her birthday and the young girl is just saying that she doesn't know what to ask for because she never had a present for her birthday and that was the saddest thing I ever heard one of the saddest things I ever heard come from a kid's mouth like I said I was fortunate enough to have both my parents and they busted their balls to allow me and my brothers to have the things that we need and we're also blessed to have things that we didn't need things that we wanted for the most part but yeah that just made me have a little flashback all the figures no 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 uh you 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 talking about a a, a child with an undeveloped brain they don't know what the f they yeah. yeah you talking about an undeveloped brain kid everything yeah. that a kid does is is it's all impulsive right based on what they feel or what their friends are doing. Uh, I just wanted to belong. Uh, it wasn't a matter, it, it, when, when you're going through what you're going through as a kid, you don't know I'm doing this because dad's not there. Right. You just know you feel something. Yeah. You just know you were born into a condition. You were born into a situation where your dad's not around. You don't know that's not normal. So, so I met a kid, go, go ahead. I, I met a kid once before here recently and he's had both his mom and his dad. 
And so I asked him, hey, what's it like to have both your mom and your dad? Yeah. He, could, he couldn't understand what I was saying because yeah. he don't know what it's like not to not have. To have. That's right. So to grow up and, 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 and every child you see don't have a dad, that becomes normal. It's, yeah. the, it's the house with the dad that everybody says, hey, man, they got a dad over there. So you don't know until you grow up and, 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 and you can look at your life uh, and assess your life where you can start connecting the dots. But when you're a kid, it's your environment, it's the conditions, it's the your, your nurture, the, 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 the foundation of your home life uh, dictates uh, what you're gonna go outside and become. It's interesting, it's, it's interesting in that your mother uh, brought you out of poverty or, you know, and, and bought a home, she got a job. And you and your brother ended up with your own rooms and everything, and yet that wasn't enough for you. So how that never, still? I, I, I've, never, I've never been to prison. I mean jail. Let me just say this. To uh, jail, I've never, right? I went to juvenile. I went to a boy's home. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just say this. Okay. Culture, culture, right? Culture is way more influential, way more powerful than home life, upbringing. Let me give you an example. There was a time when black people and there was white people standing in the crowd saying, I don't agree with that. But they wasn't going to speak out because culturally it was okay to hang them. There was a time when white people said it was okay to enslave black people. But there was a part of the people that says, no, nah, that's not right. Yeah. But culture, the culture says we're going to do it. So you put your head down based off what you was raised. But overall, the culture influences it all, right? That's why culture is so strong and so impactful. So here I am. I'm born into a culture that goes against what my mother teaches us. Yeah. I'm born where my culture... I got my mom saying, you need to go to work. I got an uncle who I see on a regular basis by way of being family members. He a pimp. I got a grandfather who sell drugs. I got another uncle who sell drugs. When I look across the street, I got another neighbor. He's getting out of jail for robbery. Uh, my cousin. So when I come inside and I cut my television on, I'm born in 1977. Think about the culture then. Pimps was glorified during the black exploitation film era. Yeah. Superfly, the Mac. <laughs> so I'm I'm growing up watching all of this on the culture. I got a mother going to work. My culture don't show me mama going to work, but I see mama going to work. All the things that my culture presents to me is negative. Yeah. And I have these same negative images, not just in my family, they in the community, they at my friend's house, they at outside the school. So biblically, my mother says that the Bible says a son can do nothing without his father, that he can only do what he see his father does. So if there's no father around, who do you mimic, mama? So I know a lot of young boys who didn't have no uncles, didn't have no brothers, didn't have no male cousins. So they was the little boy sitting down peeing outside when we were standing up peeing. So I seen a whole lot of little boys who was mimicking mama. Yeah. So they sat down and peed until they went to school. Yeah. So I had uncles and mimic, right? So Confucius said, he who controls images controls minds. My little mind was being controlled based on me being young with a young, impressionable mind. So it's not that I went against my mother. I have a culture. You got, you got NWA, NWA, the police. So all of this is being pushed upon us as children culturally. Yeah. Yeah. Boys in the hood, minister to society. They take away the, the Cosby show. They take away a different world. So culturally, man, all of all the negative images is being propagated to me. So I literally grew up believing that 
Men, for one, don't work because I've never seen a man get up and go to work. I grew up believing that men went to prison and went to jail. So I aspire to be a man. How do you become a man? You got to go to jail, nigga. That was some pretty deep stuff where most people would want to sit down and admit it. But how, at a young age, that we do gravitate toward the um, cultural aspect things for the most part. Well, I can't really say that, but when I was growing up, I really wasn't influenced by culture as much up until I went to college, I would say. But, um, yeah, whether you agree with the guy or not, he was relaying some deep facts psychology, psychologically was, but, um, and how kids can be dragged into that direction of gang violence and things of that nature but um like I said whether you like the guy or hate him he drops some gems every now and then but um let me know what y'all think about this video I don't think I've did one on this specific video but uh yeah y'all chime in with me down on news tv I'm Dre y'all have a good week